long house. I live here. I've been on the road a couple of weeks. I uh, guess I forgot to stop the mail. Oh, uh, looks like I forgot to stop the newspapers, too. Yeah, come on in. We'll see if I turned off the water in the tub. Don, I think it's his machine. I hate those things. Hello, homeowners. Best Bet Sighting offers a special this month. Tom, I don't think he's there. That machine keeps answering. Hi, Tom. It's your agent. Remember, you're performing at the comedy... Hi, Tom. Mom called me, so I call you and tell your answering machine she wants to talk to you. She had me call because I know how to work those things. Love you. Bye. Mr. Park, just a reminder that you have an appointment with the doctor at 11 a.m. Mr. Parks, Arnold Lipsman wants you to meet him at his office at 10. Hi, Tom. Oh, baby, I miss you. I wish you were here right now. So We, we got a busy day. Um... Before we get started, there's a couple of things I got to do in the kitchen. So if you want to wait, right. Well, this is what this is all about. So why don't you come with me into the kitchen? Come on. You're watching this, so you or someone you know has diabetes, or you're worried about getting diabetes, or this was the only thing left in the video store. Whew. Whatever. This is the meter and test strips I routinely use to check my blood sugar or glucose level. It's the same thing. The uh, sugar in my blood, here's my blood right there, reacts with the uh, pad on the strip. And when I put the reacted strip in the machine, it reads a color change in the pad and tells me what my blood sugar is. Some strips can be read visually using a color chart. Uh, I chose the machine because, well, I have a thing about exact numbers. I keep a record of my blood sugars, and by knowing what my blood sugars are, I can make informed choices about food and insulin. <laughs> this uh, video is designed to show you a positive approach to living with diabetes, one that will not only affect your health, but every aspect of your life. Along the way, I'm going to introduce you to some other people who have and are effectively dealing with diabetes. Here we go. Hmm, 115. It's really great for me. Now, let's get some breakfast. You don't want to look in there. Um, why don't we go out for breakfast? I've got to do this first. Now, don't freak out. I'm just going to take an injection. I have type 1 diabetes. I'm insulin dependent. It used to be called juvenile diabetes. Many of you, or people you know, have type 2 diabetes. It's more common. It's uh, non-insulin dependent diabetes. It used to be called adult onset. It's typically occurring in people who are overweight and over 40. Now, I don't want to turn this into a seminar, so uh, I'm going to skip a lot of the details. But suffice it to say, all people with type 1 diabetes must take insulin. Some people with type 2 diabetes take insulin. However, most can control their diabetes with a combination of diet, exercise, and sometimes oral medication, pills. However, the recommended lifestyle for people with either type of diabetes is really quite similar. As a matter of fact, it's basically the same lifestyle recommended by most doctors and health organizations for everyone, whether you got diabetes or not. A high-fiber, low-fat diet with regular exercise. Mom? That would be Monica, um, my next-door neighbor. <laughs> Oh, she's a really close oh. neighbor. <laughs> oh, you look pale. You mm -hmm. need to eat. Well, Monica, not, not the refrigerator. This needs to be buried. Well, yeah. What's this? <laughs> We're making a, a video on diabetes. Not without breakfast or not. Come on. Oh, uh, Monica, um, she, I have to, um. They can come too. Oh, great. Come on. So, so you get three bread exchanges, one fat and one fruit, right? Well, I prefer to think of it as cereal, toast, and orange juice, but basically that's it. You know, in 1986, when I was diagnosed, she went out and bought all the books. Oh, it's strange, but I realized that my diet was really horrible. 
And ever since Tom got diabetes, well, I've been eating better. And with, uh, with these exchange lists, it makes it a lot more simple. Where'd you get them? Oh, I called Mrs. Ogilvy, the dietitian at your doctor's office, and uh -huh. she sent them to me. Oh, that's great. You know, with diabetes, you bear the responsibility of caring for and treating yourself based on the advice of a doctor, nurse, pharmacist, dietitian. You administer your own medication, you supervise your exercise program, you monitor your diet. It can be a lonely, disheartening job. However, involving other people with your diabetes makes life a lot simpler. It starts with a relationship with a good health care team, then your family and friends. They should all be your partners. Right, dear? Yeah, right. Except for the shots. She's still a little tentative about needles. Ugh. Well... I was just kidding about the wimp thing. Thanks. You're welcome. So, what's on for the rest of the day? Well, they're going to follow me around. We're going to go to Arnold's office, then we're going to the doctor's office, and then we're going out to the beach to meet Bill Carlson. He's going to show Bill us... Bill Carlson, the triathlete? Yeah. He's, he's going to show us uh, that several... That young, good-looking triathlete? Yeah. And he's the Young, been... good-looking triathlete with those great thighs? Yeah. Why do you ask? Um, no, no reason. Good. Uh, so, okay, after we meet with him, we're going to... Maybe I'll meet you guys later at the beach. Arnold Lipsman's my publicist. The publicist gets you publicity. You know, magazine articles, television interviews, invitations to great parties. Arnold also has type 2 diabetes. I didn't hire him because he has diabetes. I hired him because he's a great publicist. With clients like Billy Crystal, Robin Williams, Charlene Tilton, who don't have diabetes, but they do have Arnold. And even though he has those huge clients, he always has time for me. It's really great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi. Is uh, Arnold in? No, he's out. Where'd he go? Are you Robin Williams? No. Billy Crystal? No. Charlene Tilton? No. He's out. Hello? Yes? Uh-huh. 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 Are you Tom Parks? Yes. He's at the doctor's. Thank you. Arnold and I have the same doctor. It's important to see your doctor and other members of your healthcare team on a regular basis. It's positive reinforcement if you're doing well, and a visit can, uh, pick up problems before they have a chance to get out of hand. Oh. Stacy. Hi, Tom. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Is Arnold Lipsman here? No, he left. But he said you should meet him at his favorite restaurant for lunch. I, I know where that is. Oh, good. Thanks. Sure. Gary. It's Gary Owens. Well, Tom. Hi. Hey, nice to see you. Nice to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm having a checkup. I didn't know you had diabetes. Oh. Yeah, I've had it since I was nine years old. No. Sure. A lot of people in Hollywood have diabetes, you know. I was talking to an actor last week who came out here years ago, and he said he was afraid to mention that he had diabetes because, well, he was in fear that that might cost him work, which is ridiculous. Having diabetes, as you know, doesn't have to limit a person in any way. Uh, what are you up to, Tom? I'm making a video to tell people that having diabetes doesn't have to limit a person in any way. I couldn't have said it better than myself. Uh, you don't need an announcer, do you? Gee, Gary, that'd be great. I I'm not sure if we have anything to announce. Oh, Tom, there are always things to announce. Always. Patient Tom Parks. Patient Tom Parks. Your doctor is ready for you in the lab. How'd you do that? Oh, I have an extra pair of lips right in here. Would you like to see them? No, Gary, that's no, I, fine. I, I no, no, it. really, that's fine. No, no, you're higher. You oh, got the good. job. Hey, thank That'd you, Tom. Terrific. Thank you, hey, Gary. Yes. We'll see you later. Good morning, Mr. Parks. How are you? You're Stephen First from St. Elsewhere. No, I'm not. I'm a doctor. No, you're an actor. I'm a doctor. You're an actor. Doctor! Actor! Would an actor have one of these? Uh, I guess not. Well, I guess that proves it. Get up on the scale, please. Okay. 
You know, you look a lot like Stephen First from St. Elsewhere. Anybody ever told you that? No. Okay. You know, we all know how important it is to watch our weight. I have type 2 diabetes, and ever since I dropped a few pounds, my blood sugars have been pretty normal. Hey! 164, not bad, not bad at all. Patient Stephen First, your doctor is ready for you in the lab. You know what? I forgot I was doing surgery this morning. I'm doing one of those heart things, you know? I gotta go wash my hands. I mean, scrub up. Tom, how are you feeling? Well, I feel fine. Everything's been great. Any complaints? No, not at all. The important thing is to find a healthcare professional you can talk to and trust. Whenever I come in, Dr. Van Ness always talks to me a little while about what's going on in my life. Well, everything in your life will affect your diabetes, and diabetes will affect everything in your life. It's, it's not something you can separate. It's true, and the discipline required by diabetes has made me more disciplined about everything in my life. I eat better, I exercise more, I feel better than I ever did before I was diagnosed. Um, what's that? It's to test your nerves. What are you going to do, see how close you can get to me before I scream? Be a good boy, and I'll let you keep a tongue depressor. Neato. There was a week or so last month I was a little down. I, I stopped exercising, my blood sugars went crazy, and I started worrying about ketoacidosis. Did you test your urine? Yes, I tested my urine. Was it positive for ketones? Not a trace. And? As soon as I started exercising, my blood sugars went back to normal. Just like you said they would. Thank you. Tom, everything's great. You're doing really well. And I'll see you in three months. We're going to visit Jean Smart. She's one of the stars of Designing Women. Jean has diabetes, and she's pregnant. Pregnancy presents a special set of problems for women with diabetes. For the health of the baby, it's important to keep your blood sugars under especially tight control. It's always interesting being on a studio lot. Jean. Huh. How are you? Grammy? No, pregnant. <laughs> I will never be ready. For, for the uh, series? No, for the baby. Oh, oh <laughs> you're right. Do you know what it's going to be? Did you do the amniocentesis? I did. It's a boy. Yeah? It's a boy, yes. I, I feel great, though. I... How, how has the uh, pregnancy affected your diabetes? Well, I'm probably, ironically, healthier now than I've been since I was in high school because yeah. uh, you feel this incredible responsibility, and I've taken so much better care of my diabetes, keeping the blood sugars level. When you're pregnant, it, it's really important to... Yes. Well, they tend to... Pregnancy tends to make them fluctuate up and down anyway. Right. So, so what are you doing differently that you didn't do before? Well, basically, Tell me testing everything. my blood sugar yeah. about 10 to 12 times a day. Yeah. I get up in the, mor in the middle of the night and early in the morning to test my blood sugar. Yeah. I stopped smoking. Don't tell my mother. Good girl. Very good. Yeah, that's terrific. Now, uh, how long have you had diabetes? Since I was 13. Uh, about five years. <laughs> um, how has the diabetes uh, affected, you know, you've got diabetes and you've got this stressful shooting schedule and you're pregnant. How do you deal with all that? Well, I, I do have a regimen that I try to follow when I'm at work. Uh -huh. um, about once a day, I'll go into my dressing room, turn down the lights, lock the door, find the most comfortable chair, and then I scream at the top of my lungs for about five minutes. That reduces stress? No, but it reduces the number of times they ask me to work late. They're very scared of me. Miss Smart, <laughs> we're ready for you on the set. Thank you. Listen, this Gotta was go. terrific. Thanks for Thank taking a moment you. to good do this. Yeah, really, have a good day. Thanks a lot, Jane. Bye-bye, Tom. Thanks. She's wonderful. I can't believe they gave a star like Jean Smart this dinky dressing room. I want to take a look inside and see what she's got. <laughs> to lunch with Arnold. A lot of people who have diabetes are intimidated by restaurants. There's no need to be. It's just a matter of asking questions. As with everything else with diabetes, knowledge is the most important thing. The more you know, the less you have to fear. Arnold eats in restaurants all the time. This will be a really terrific time to catch up with him. Kimmel, 
party of two. Kimmel, party of two. Tom! Dana! It's Dana Hill. Why did you come and tell me you were making a video about diabetes? If you tell people you have diabetes, you'll be surprised to find out how many other people have diabetes, too. And if you live in Hollywood and tell people you're making a video about diabetes, well, you got diabetes? Yep. Got an 8 by 10? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, join me for lunch? Well, I'm supposed to meet Arnold here. Arnold Lipsman? Yeah. Arnold Lipsman, the publicist? Yeah. Good luck. Can I take your order? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask you a question. It says here that the chicken Batista is made with a special secret sauce. Yes. Well, what's in the secret sauce? If I told you what was in the secret sauce, it wouldn't be a secret anymore, now would it? Yes, and if I left, I wouldn't be a paying customer now, would I? Carry out these facts. Pineapple juice. Unsweetened pineapple juice? What are you, in the CIA? No, uh, I have diabetes. I apologize, I'll check with the chef right now. Thank you. We do have to ask a lot of questions. Oh, it's one of the little hassles. But I found that if you tell them you have diabetes, they'll be glad to accommodate you. I have you. found the same thing, and it's so gratifying. Yeah. I'm sorry it took so long. The chef said that it's unsweetened pineapple juice, and he would go very lightly on the oil if that would help. Oh, it would, thank you. What are you going to have? I'm meeting Arnold Lipsman for lunch. <laughs> Arnold Lipsman, the publicist. Yeah, he called me and said he'd meet me. Oh, yeah. I bet he did. No, I, he's going to meet me. Oh, I'm sure of it. He'll be here. <laughs> Whatever you say. <clears throat> how, how long have you had that? Uh, since I was about 10 years old. Tough to have as a kid? Well, it's a little hard to handle. You know, when you're 10, you're not thinking in terms of being an adult, yeah. you know, being responsible. All right. But then? Well, with the help of my family and my doctor and a little general maturing on my part, I, I found out how important it was to take care of myself. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Telephone for Tom Parks. Telephone for Mr. Tom Parks. Yes? Oh. Hello? Well, where did he say he was going? He'd meet me after lunch? Thank you. Try the chicken Batista. It's fabulous. Thank you. Now we're going to go out to the beach and uh, meet with Bill Carlson to talk about exercise. As with everything else in this video, check with your doctor before you embark on any kind of exercising program. Tom Parks, the comedian? Yeah, I am. Uh, let, let me get a pencil. It's from Arnold. Says he'll meet me later. Well, whether Arnold's here or not, uh, we're going to talk about exercise. I walk a very fast two miles three or four times a week. That's what my doctor recommends. Bill. It's Bill Carlson. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Hi, Tom. Um, Bill here's a triathlete. How many, uh, how many miles do you run a week? About 60. And uh, how many miles do you swim? About 10. And how many miles do you ride on this bike? Uh, about 350. And you have diabetes? Yeah. But you don't do that because you have diabetes? No. You do it because you have serious psychological problems. Bill uh, is showing me some of his training program. Bill, does, uh, day, uh, does having diabetes make it difficult to do this kind of stuff? No, not really. Huh? But there are a few extra precautions that I, that I must take. I test my blood sugar more frequently, adjust my insulin, and watch what I eat very carefully. Diabetes doesn't have to stop you from performing. You just gotta learn how to adjust. That's it. 
Just adjust. I think diabetes has had a positive impact on my life. I'm more motivated now. And the more you know about diabetes, the more control that you have over it. Also, my family and friends, they're all involved. It's a real group thing. Tom, your family was a big help to you, weren't they? Oh, absolutely. OK, OK, no. I'll meet Jonathan at the park. But you tell Arnold he better be at the club tonight. I promised these people he'd be in this thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Some um, emergency. Jonathan. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? Good to see Good you. Good to see you. Who's your friend? Kristen. Hey, hey Kristen. Jonathan plays uh, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. He also has diabetes. Uh, when did you get diagnosed? Uh, I was a senior in college. Yeah? How'd you take it? Not very good. Yeah. Uh, what happened? A nurse came by one evening and helped explain to me the, the ups and downs of diabetes, but to let me know that I could still uh, actively participate in, my, in sports and stay active, but I'd have to make some changes in my life, such as taking insulin, uh, changing my diet and monitoring my sugar levels. Yeah, and so everything's been fine since then? Everything's been great. Yeah, and, and when you were hired by the Kansas City Chiefs, they knew? Oh, yeah. Uh, every team in the NFL knows about your health. Yeah. And, and it was no problem. And you were drafted in the second round. That's right. That's great. Yeah. Now, you work with kids with diabetes. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yeah. Let's suit up. Great. Bend your knees a little more. That's good. Isn't that sweet? John. Her. Look, man, uh, she doesn't really think she's going to be a football player, does she? Oh! Great hit. I'll meet you guys at the house. Just go on. No, I mean, you can go. I'll be along. Leave. Come on in. Come in. I uh, want to introduce you to my parents. Hello. Hi. Bill Carlson mentioned that his family was very supportive. My family has been, too. The support of family and friends cannot be overemphasized. Dad's had diabetes for 35 years, and I never thought of him as being sick. He was just like every other dad, except he took two shots a day. And Mom didn't fix two kinds of food. We ate the same food that Dad ate, and I think we were healthier for it. And they didn't hide diabetes from us. They told us what it was, they told us it could happen to us, and they told us not to be afraid. As a matter of fact, when I was diagnosed, I was in Missouri. My big reaction was, I'm in Missouri and I've got diabetes? <laughs> now, Dad, you've had diabetes 35 years. In that time, what's been the biggest advance as far as your diabetes is gone? Well, there's been tremendous advances in the understanding and treatment and management of diabetes in that time, Tom. The biggest thing for me has been the technological advance that has made, me, made it possible for me to manage my diabetes by checking my own blood sugar. The other thing that I have to mention is your mother's support. She's been a tremendous help. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. This is about snack time by now. I'll, well, go, okay. I'll go get something. Over the years, Mom has gotten real good at spotting the signs of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. As a matter of fact, Monica's gotten pretty good at it, too, haven't you, dear? Yes, dear. When Tom was diagnosed, he told all his friends that if he started to act strange, we should try to get him something to eat. Well, you can imagine with Tom, we were trying to feed him all the time. <laughs> cute, real cute. Mom, not the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, we know Tom's got uh, diabetes, but so what? I mean, after all, my brother's got diabetes. And that didn't stop him from getting a job on The Tonight Show or on HBO. My brother's never been on those shows. No, Tom. Yeah, you know, maybe if I had diabetes, I could get on The Tonight Show. Yeah, maybe if you had an act, you could get on The Tonight <laughs> Show. <laughs> You're his agent. Yeah, hey, yeah, Tom. Ten percent. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Oh, hey, Ben. Yeah. What's happening? Very cool. Hey, look at that. Very cool. 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 This week on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I got uh, had, had sort of a very strange day. Got tackled by an 11 year old oh, and yeah. was taken oh, out of the act. It was a. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait. Say, Tom, are you going to test? I always do it before the show, Frank. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm this. I got a dollar, says he. Hey, did you eat dinner? What'd you have? Yeah, it was a baked or broiled. What time yeah, did you have? Did you dinner, exercise man? today? Um, did you run or walk? Well, was it an MPH or regular? Any pets died? Uh, um. What do you think? Pets died? What are you talking about? Hey, come on. It was regular. Everything was regular. It was a regular day. Right. 115. No, 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 no. 120. 120. 12. Looks a little pale. Give me that. Nine hundred and eleven. John, John, what, John. What? what? One sixteen. Oh. oh. Yeah. And yeah, right. you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Thompson, Mark, you're up. Gotta go. Let's All right. Have a good one, Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy store is proud to present our headliner, the national chairman of the American Diabetes Association's Comedy Crusade Against Diabetes. Tom Parks. Great show, Tom. Thanks, Richard. Oh, by the way, there's a Arnold Lipsman is waiting to see you out in the lobby. Yeah, right. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Arnold. Good to see you. You're late. I'm sorry, but I got a bulletin for you. What? Having diabetes doesn't make you punctual. Arnold. Tom, Tom, calm down. Your blood sugars are going to go right through the roof. I can see it coming. Hey, okay. All right. Listen, did I get here in time to remind you to tell people that type 2 diabetes is just as serious as type 1? Yeah, Arnold's right. Type 2 diabetes is just as serious as type 1. And it's just as important to control either type of diabetes. The best way to control diabetes is through knowledge. Know everything you can about diabetes. I'm sorry I yelled. That's OK. Did you get out of your system? Yeah. Well, I guess I got here in time after all, didn't I? Yes, you did. How about a snack? It's on me. OK. Oh, good. Let's go. By the way, Tom, but how was your day? It was great. We had a great day. Oh, good. Listen, why don't we get together more often? Yeah, right. I'll call you. <laughs> well, that's it. I know you may have been expecting more specifics, but basically, you've got to want to take care of yourself before any of the other stuff will do any good. It's going to require some attitude adjustment, but that's the biggest adjustment. The quality of your life does not have to change except for the better. Keep your sense of humor. It helps. It really does. And if you need to talk to somebody, call the American Diabetes Association. They are there to help you. Before I go, Everyone in the film that said they have diabetes really does have diabetes. But there's some of the cast and crew that I'd like you to meet now. My name is Nicole Kramer, and I'm an actress. I've had diabetes since 1983. Hi, my name's Brad Slate. I'm a comedian. I've had diabetes for four years. I have it every day, and I take care of it every day. Hi, my name is Charles Hughes. I'm the production designer. I've had diabetes since 1988. My name's Paul Landry. I'm an actor, um, and I've had type 1 diabetes since uh, December 7th, 1987. I'm Magda Harut. I'm an actress. I've had type 2 diabetes for almost eight years. Can you tell? I'm Tim Collins. I'm the dolly grip on this production. You see the camera moving? It's me. I've had diabetes since 1983. Hi, I'm Daniel Salas-Porras. I'm an actor, comedian, and I've had diabetes for 16 years now. I take care of it every day, and it helps a great deal. I'm Joe Masaki. I'm the director of photography, and I've had type 2 diabetes since 1971. I'm John Van Ness. I'm an actor, and I've had diabetes since I was two years old. Hi, Mom.
Hi, I'm Ellen, and I'm here to introduce you to your Ames Glucometer 3 Diabetes Care System. When you consider the benefits of monitoring your blood glucose, it's no wonder that more than 2 million people use self-monitoring as an important part of their diabetes management routine. Not only does self-monitoring help you avoid the emergencies and long-term problems that may result from diabetes, but just as important, self-monitoring lets you take control over your life and make decisions about how you want to live. Monitoring gives you the flexibility to live an active social life, to eat a greater variety of foods, to travel, to participate in sports and other activities, to do the things you want to do as you achieve and maintain good control over your diabetes. To gain this flexibility, first you need to learn how to use your Glucometer 3 blood glucose meter properly. And that's what this program's all about, to show you how to consistently achieve accurate results from your testing. Results that will help you and your doctor or diabetes counselor better manage your diabetes and will enable you to take control over your life. To make testing as easy and convenient as possible, everything you need to learn about performing blood testing is included in the package with your Glucometer 3. The Glucometer 3 blood glucose meter, a bottle of glucofilm test strips, the Glucolet automatic lancing device, facial tissue, a Clinilog record book. Also included, is a package of Ames Glucofilm Normal Control Solution, a check paddle, the user's guide, and an instructional audio tape. Before you begin using your glucometer 3 meter to test your blood sugar, you first need to perform a meter check test to identify your meter's electronic baseline value. To do the meter check test, you need your meter, your user guide, the glucometer check paddle, and a pencil or pen. The first step in running the check test is turning on your meter by pressing the blue button. A full display of numbers and words appear, followed by a program number, which we'll talk about a little later. After the program number appears, open the test slide by gently sliding it to the left. You'll notice that the number 60 appears in the display. Now, press the blue button again to start the countdown. Remove the check paddle from its case and place it in the test slot, making sure that the side of the paddle with the check mark is facing the display. Then close the test slide and wait for the meter to count down. When the test result appears in the display, you then compare that number with the range numbers printed on the check paddle package insert. If your test result falls between the two range numbers, you then record your result in the space shown in section two of your user guide. I've already done this. Any other check paddle testing you do should not differ more than six milligrams per deciliter from this first test result. If your first test result does not fall between the two range numbers, call the toll-free 800 number printed on the back of your glucometer 3 meter. Ordinarily, you need to perform a check test once a month, or whenever you have reason to believe that your meter is not working properly. And remember to call our toll-free customer service number if the check test is ever out of range. Our friendly customer service people are there to answer your questions and help you solve problems over the phone. Another important part of self-monitoring is making sure that your meter, glucofilm test strips, and your own testing technique are working the way they should. And the way that you do this is by running a control test using glucofilm control solution. To perform a control test, you'll need your glucometer 3 meter, glucofilm test strips, a bottle of Ames glucofilm normal control solution, the control solution package insert, and wiping materials such as any type of wiping tissue or absorbent paper towel. The first step in performing a control test is getting all your materials ready, which involves folding your facial tissue, 
removing the cap from your control solution bottle, removing a test strip from the, the bottle. Oh, no problem. I always keep a spare bottle in the drawer. Now take a strip from the bottle and place it on a clean surface next to your tissue with the pad side facing up. And immediately put the cap back on the bottle to keep the strips fresh, which brings up an important step to remember. Writing the opened date on your bottle of strips. Even though there's already an expiration date printed on the bottle label, this only tells you how long the strips will remain fresh if the bottle has never been opened. Once the bottle is opened, you have 120 days or about four months before the strips begin to lose their freshness. So, in order to ensure you are always testing with fresh strips, it's important that you write the current date on each new bottle and check the date from time to time. After you've gotten everything ready, press the blue button to turn on your meter. You'll see the full display of numbers and words appear, followed by a single number. This is your meter's current program number which you need to match with the program number printed on the bottle of glucofilm strips you are using. To do this, simply press the blue button repeatedly until the program number for your strips appears in the display. Once you set the program number, it will stay in the meter's memory until you change it. Now, open the test slide on your meter and the number 60 appears in the display. Pick up your glucofilm test strip Squeeze one drop of control solution onto the yellow pad and immediately press the blue button to start the countdown. Be sure to hold the strip by the handle and keep it level. After the meter counts down, pick up your folded wiping material and wrap it around the handle of the strip. At 22 and 21 seconds, you'll hear two short beeps. At 20 seconds, you'll hear a longer beep signaling you to quickly wipe the solution off the test pad using one firm stroke as you apply firm pressure to the tissue. Then place the strip into the test slot with the pad facing the display and close the test slide. When the meter has counted down to one, three dashes appear in the display. Then the control test result appears and a long beep sounds. Now, compare this number with the control range printed in the control solution package insert. If your test result falls within this range, you know that your meter and the glucofilm test strips are working properly and that your technique is good. If your test result is outside of the range, then follow the instructions printed in the package insert. After you've checked your test result, open the test slide, remove the strip, Close the slide and turn off the meter by pressing the button. As far as when to perform a control, that pretty much depends on your needs. Some people run a control test every day. Others do it once a week. We suggest that you talk with your doctor or diabetes counselor and find out what would be best for you. Some people use control tests to practice until they feel comfortable with the procedure. Now that we've covered control testing, we're ready to talk about blood glucose testing. To perform a blood glucose test, you'll need your glucometer 3 meter, glucofilm test strips, wiping material, the glucolet lancing device with lancet, and the Clinilog record book. Before you begin the test, you need to do a couple of things to get ready. First, you need to fold your wiping tissue or paper towel in half and place it on a clean surface. Next, you need to assemble the glucolet device. To do this, simply twist off the end cap and insert the lancet into the glucolet, pushing it straight in all the way until it won't go any farther. Then, twist off the plastic cap from the end of the lancet and replace the end cap. Your glucolet is now ready to be used. Most people use the gray end cap. However, if you have a problem getting a good drop of blood, you may want to use the clear end cap. Now, you need to clean your finger, either with an alcohol wipe or with soap and warm water, which will help stimulate blood flow and make it easier to get a good drop of blood. After you've washed and dried your finger, remove a glucofilm test strip from the bottle and place it on the clean surface next to your facial tissue with a pad side facing up. And remember to replace the bottle cap immediately. 
Now we're ready to perform a test. Press the blue button to turn on your meter and check to see that the program number matches the number on your glucofilm test strip container. If not, press the button until you have the right program number. Open the test slide door and the number 60 will appear in the display. Press the end of the glucolet firmly against the side of your finger, close to your fingertip, and push the release button. And then start forming a drop of blood by massaging your palm and working your way down to where you did your finger stick. Don't squeeze your finger too tightly because it may affect your blood glucose value. Once you have a good drop of blood formed, pick up your glucofilm test strip, apply the blood to the pad, covering the pad completely, and immediately press the blue button to start the countdown. At 22 and 21 seconds, you'll hear two short beeps, signaling you to get ready to wipe the blood off the strip. At 20 seconds, quickly wipe the blood off the test pad using one firm stroke as you apply firm pressure to the tissue. Then place the strip into the test slot with the pad facing the display and close the test slide. After your test result appears in the display, open the test slide door, remove the strip, and close the slide. You can either record the test result in your logbook right now, or you may want to use the meter's memory function, either to store the result in the memory or to delete the result. We'll talk about these memory features in a minute. Now let's talk about some special display messages that may appear instead of a number. For example, if the display shows high as your result, it may mean that your blood glucose is above 500 milligrams per deciliter. If you get a low reading, it may mean that your blood glucose is below 20 milligrams per deciliter. If your display shows the letters ERR, it means that you may have performed the test improperly. If you get one of these display codes, turn to sections 4 and 5 of your user guide for information and help. And remember, always consult your doctor before making any changes in your medication. To make testing as easy as possible, your meter has special memory features that allow you to store and recall up to 10 test results at a time and to get an average of those results. Let's work through these features, beginning with storing and deleting a result. If, after running a test, you decide to store the result in memory, simply push the button to turn off the meter and the result is stored in memory automatically and entered into the average. If you decide not to store the result in memory, you can delete the result by opening the slide door, which prompts the small d to appear in the display, and then pushing the button to turn off the meter. If you change your mind and decide to store the result after all, simply close the door and your result will reappear in the display. Then you can turn off your meter and the result will be stored. Most people use the delete function after they've run a control test or they discover they've performed a test improperly. That way they can keep the results out of the meter's average. To access the average blood glucose value of your stored results, you first turn on the meter and wait for the program number to appear in the display. Then press and hold the button for two to three seconds until the letter A appears in the display. When you release the button, the letter A and your average for stored results will alternate in the display. The MR in the upper left-hand corner of the display tells you that you're in the memory recall mode. To access the 10 most recent test results, you just press the button again and a number one appears followed by your most recent test result. Press the button again, and the number two appears, followed by the next most recent test, and so on. By continuing to press the button, you can step through all the stored test results. After you've reviewed all the test results stored in memory, the display will stop changing, and you will hear a short beep, telling you that there are no more test results in the memory. To turn off your meter, while you are in the recall mode, simply press and hold the button down for more than two to three seconds until the display goes blank. Once you've stored 10 results in the memory, the next result you store will go into the number one memory location and the oldest test result will be deleted automatically. 
As an added feature, if you ever forget to turn off your meter, it turns itself off automatically after three minutes of non-use. As you can see, testing is pretty simple to do, but it's important that you practice these procedures and perform control tests regularly to make sure you're getting accurate, reliable results from your testing. Although we've shown some of the main steps involved in testing, it's important that you read your user guide to find out about maintenance and care of your meter. You may also want to listen to the audio tape included with your meter, which takes you through the testing procedures step by step. And always feel free to call the toll-free 800 number if you have any questions. And finally, get into the habit of testing your blood glucose on a daily basis, according to your doctor's instructions. We want you to get the most out of your blood glucose testing so you can do the things you want to do and get the most out of your life as you manage your diabetes.